Well, hello, that's me again. Today is the October 15th. It is Saturday. I seldom do the uh, videos in sequence, you know, one after another, but this is exactly the case which I needed to do it. And this is going to be about WD-40 and how I failed you all trying to lubricate my chair with WD-40. No, I'm screwing with you, obviously. So I really appreciate everybody, all 2,000 of you who suggested me not to use WD-40. And I'm going to be using oil for my chair. But actually, let's get to the more serious issues. And I will start with this. And you will understand why I start with this and why I'm doing this uh, uh, basically next day uh, after I did my last video. So let's start with this. As you can see yourself, as it is informed uh, by constitution, the constitution gave the power of the purse, the nation's checkbook to Congress. You can easily download the uh, Congressional Power of the Purse Act the whole text of the bill and you can study if if you want to and if you can understand this you know also kind of financial uh, lawyer mumbo jumbo but it's an important bill obviously in fact it is a strategic bill which is crucial for the existence of the american state and now of the whole western world but here we will have to i have to address the thing which uh, started to circulate yesterday and I started to even remove those comments from my uh, discussion board uh, below in my YouTube video. And there were people popping up here and there on my blog constantly saying that, oh my God, Russians are evacuating Kherson and they are ready to give it up. To give it up. Let me tell you something immediately for you to understand what is this all about. First. Russia continues evacuate people today, even from what will be absolutely fully de defended, uh, defended uh, Donetsk and uh, Lugansk, because many people cannot take their, um, basically their stress of periodically being under fire, and that's what really uh, NATO is good at, killing civilians, and that's what Ukrainians do. So it is an ongoing uh, uh, process. And uh, as it turned out yesterday, yeah, Russians were allowing, so to speak, uh, to use the free transport out of the Kherson Oblast, not just city of Kherson, but Kherson Oblast for people who cannot take any more in terms of the uh, shelling, which Ukraine constantly does, shelling everything there is there, you know. And something like 350 people just volunteered to get out of uh, Kherson uh, region, which they have been moved to Russia, and then they will decide to do what they want to do, because now Kherson is the part of Russia, and basically for them it means absolutely nothing, just basically moving within the same country. And that brings us to this very important point, why people started to talk about Russians giving up uh, on Kherson and moving behind the Dnipro, Dnipro, Dnipro River and things of this nature very simple and it has everything to do with what i just showed you in terms of the power of the purse of the u.s congress uh but before i kind of begin to elaborate let me explain one simple thing unlike it was in the world war ii unlike it was in the korean war unlike it was even in vietnam war Modern war doesn't have many secrets in terms of the intention of the uh, enemy for a simple reason, because obviously we have um, an immensely powerful ISR assets on both sides. Uh, obviously, Ukraine doesn't have those assets, it's the United States and Russia. They have those satellite uh, constellations, they have all those uh, unmanned aerial vehicles, they have all those electronic uh, sensors, uh, optronic sensors, which make no secret really for accumulation of anything larger than their uh, platoon anywhere along the front line and in this particular case that means that you will know what the uh, uh, enemy is going to do because the enemy will accumulate the troops for some task and you will know what is going on <clears throat> evidently many people do not understand 
But the question of the so-called yet another Ukrainian or armed forces of Ukraine assault, if you wish, offensive in Kherson area, it was so obvious that one doesn't have to even uh, look for it in some, you know, closed, uh, you know, classified sources. It's obvious. It's in the open. Everybody knows there is another uh, division, essentially, 10,000, uh, basically, uh, cannon fodder, which was uh, trained in Poland, which have been, uh, basically, moved towards the Kherson area. And in this particular case, as you know, that, yeah, Russians completely expect it, they anticipate it, they know, they have all data, up to the point of what are their formations, what are the units, who commands them, where they are located, what will be actually their assembly areas, and things of this nature. But many people still do not understand, because majority of the lay people, it's not their fault, and make no mistake, I don't blame people, uh, as some would probably will imply, among all those numerous trolls which lurk um, around my videos and uh, around my blog, that it's not their fault. Obviously, you do not go to military academy and study all that. I mean, you have to be explaining, and this is what I'm trying to explain. And let me tell you, t t uh, tell you what, uh, how the whole panic of another impending doom has started two days ago. And you can bet your ass on the fact that it started from the British media. In general, we have to understand that Western media as such, and including some in Russian media, many, it also applies to a degree in Russian media, that generally media class, the so-called journalists, it's the lowest of the low. Essentially, these are people who cannot do math, and they went into study something which cannot, a normal person with their average IQ can study within one quarter, one semester, and be done with it, and be excellent journalist, if you wish to, but obviously out of those people who go there and now follow this new slogan of the Western journalism, which used to be report the world. Now they work and they change the world. And among those Western low lives who populate, 99% of them are like that, who populate all this media class and uh, only very few of them are true journalists, true reporters of the scale of Graham Phillips, for example, or Yeva Bartlett, and a number of other people. Most of them are people who are only good for reporting on what kind of lingerie uh, uh, Beyonce wears, or that's their level of expertise. So basically people, if you have the bachelor's degree or even master's degree in some like strategic communications know this, they, they have only degree into basically psyops, basically a propaganda, strategic propaganda, or basically they have degree in line. But among all this American uh, and other Western media low lives, British are, uh, occupy absolutely very specific place because this is the media who are fully supporting supported of uh, supporting of terrorism of war crimes, and this is uh, has everything to do I think with the fact that uh, Britain can never got over the fact that it was reduced to as I already stated small island. They industrialized and absolutely inconsequential for the real economy or let alone military power, and they still suffer from this. And guess what they do? <clears throat> so this is what where it all started about this impending doom and Russians evacuating the whole Kherson uh, two days ago. This is obviously Associated Press. You can read the whole article, and I suggest you to read because it is absolutely filled with lies and <clears throat> misrepresentation and just making up news and people. But look at this. Residents urged to leave a next region as Ukraine advances. Moscow installed authorities in Ukraine, occupied southern uh, region of Kherson, urged local residents to evacuate to Russia on Friday as key forces push their counteroffenses deeper in, into the region. Already here is actually, it's a lie upon lie upon lie. And here's the uh, why, uh, and, and again, they make shit up literally as they write this article, whoever wrote it, whatever, some ignoramus who was typing this, is the fact that they made up some people, some names, who said that, yeah, the do there is a doom, you know, gloom, and, you know, some, sure, they obviously asked not to tell their names, sure the good old trick of them, primarily our Western media, of not know, telling 
who talked to you and why they talked to you. So in most of the cases, it's just simply making shit up. The same as they're basically using their uh, basically decorations from the movies and movie sets to uh, show their Russian equipment, abandoned equipment, or basically having uh, uh, armed forces of Ukraine uh, basically playing Russian soldiers and you know turning themselves in, surrendering to uh, you know this uh, armed forces of Ukraine. It is well known program. It is financed by British. Uh, special services so and that's the, the same kind of thing but obviously Russians knew and anticipated and in fact it happens all the time about all this advancement so to speak of the uh, um, armed forces of Ukraine and guess what yes they tried again guess how it all ended of course it all ended with this as uh, TASS reports today and it is all over the uh, basically Russian media. There, it's basically the Kherson area. Uh, Kherson Oblast reported about full failure of the offensive of the armed forces of Ukraine in region. And we have people from the the same people who are allegedly urged people uh, from Kherson to evacuate. That basically they tried. There, all those Ukrainian forces to advance it again, and guess what? As it was expected, they have been they had the floor wiped with them, and they basically have been most of their uh, formations have been uh, dispersed. Many people died on their part, huge number of the equipment have been, of course, burned. And you can look it up all over the places, and e even YouTube, you can see yourself how those uh, this cannon for are trained by NATO. And by the way, British guys, not that British guys have any relations to real war. Britain didn't win shit since uh, 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 the um, uh, 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 Malvinas and, of course, Falklands, you know, war. But then again, it was primarily the naval warfare. And uh, when you look at this, it's like, yeah, they dr drop in this piece of lie, of propaganda, and this piece is being promoted and spread immediately by the people. Some do it for agenda, others because they are really, they really do not understand what what's the talk is about and what is the defense, so to speak, lines of Russian armed forces in this area. Again, it's not the solid front line. They do not understand that. It's not solid front line. You do not have often tactical contact. What means the breaching of the gap between one formation and the other formation which form this front line. And let me show you here why this whole situation is being promoted by all kinds of Western media. Just to show you again, let me demonstrate to you. If you look at the Duchami area, you see this? This is the Duchami area. This is the simple, single uh, small hamlet. It's about 2,000 people population. Where one of the units of uh, Russian uh, armed forces is. And guess what? As you can see yourself, just look around. The fields, right? Open fields. You have some Liman, which is just kind of like the Gulf. Or from Dnieper River, and then you have yeah this small uh, hamlet, if you wish, village, and yeah they tried to those idiots uh, from uh, you know NATO who planned this, they started again trying to assault this road. You can see this road between Duchani and Milia, which is uh, going there because you have to move by roads. You know, look at also the scale to the at the right lower corner. It's two kilometer scale, and you can see yourself. You can size up the area. There, that's what is this attempt was again. You know, at Duchani. Guess what? It was beaten, uh, beaten out, beaten down, and they got their ass basically handed to them. Then look at this. I'm showing now again, I repeat you again, this is the terrain between uh, Nikolaev and Kherson. As you can see yourself again, this is 52 kilometers of the empty fields with one major road and few smaller roads basically there. Guess what? How difficult it is for the good optronic mean or even uh, any kind of unmanned aer aerial vehicle to look at that and see their forces um, and uh, columns, uh, you know, rolling towards the Kherson. 
Well, I would say not very difficult at all. In fact, is you can probably see it even visually from the good vantage point. Now I want to show you also this thing. This is Kherson, and this is Kherson, and distance between Kherson and uh, what is called the used to be checkpoint uh, in Armyansk, which is the main road which connects the, connects basically Kherson to Crimea. And as you can see yourself, there are uh, basically one major uh, highway going there. And by the way, this is exactly the highway where uh, Russian troops, which accumulated in Crimea, can easily pour in into Kherson. And some already are doing already. Uh, and if need be to accumulate either for the offensive along the, um, the uh, shores of the Black Sea, or just to repel whatever uh, armed forces of Ukraine will want to throw at them. There you go, you see, and by the way, look at this, no, basically no forest, no nothing, fields. And here is the, uh, basically, Kherson terrain, as shown by, actually, a uh, vantage point of the bird flying over it. Uh, let me ask you a question, a very simple question. How do you defend again, uh, uh, there? You cannot defend there. No, no normal people will defend this. I mean, that is why uh, this is the b foundation of uh, Ukrainian propaganda. Because you have the empty fields, which last for, and you know, uh, roll for tens and tens of kilometers. And then basically, then you make a dash with your column of the armor and bunch of the personnel, you know, along those fields and along those few roads. And guess what? While doing so, you report advances, you report that you recapture territory which nobody defends because nobody in their freaking own mind who have the actually served in the uniform for half a year anywhere will defend empty fields. But this is the foundation of the all, uh, primarily 90% of the armed forces of Ukraine offensive, so to speak. They move the column in the empty field for 10 kilometers, then they get into the contact with the Russian forces, uh, rather the uh, weapons, of uh, standoff weapons, Russian forces and artillery, they get obliterated and they basically you know, are dispersed. But they say, we, you know, advanced 20 kilometers. Sure, and guess what? All this has everything to do with what I originally pointed out to you in terms of the power of the purse, because this is all about how much money the US Congress will give Biden's administration to support this uh, basically uh, failed uh, you know, enterprise uh, for the United States and NATO. And when people say to me that, um, yeah, you know what, yeah, they are attacked and there is offensive and you know what, they are killed in tens of thousands and that's what will continue to happen. Uh, but in the end, you need optics. You constantly need optics. You constantly need the, uh, basically this uh, psychological and you know emotional high on the uh, Western public because they need to constantly be subjected together with congressmen. Most of them stupid people. They are lawyers. They never served a day in the armed forces. They won't understand uh, anything. How to run their squad, let alone uh, platoon and what the modern weapon systems are, what the modern recon is. Because they live by their uh, whatever those wonderful job the Congressional Research Service is trying to do. You cannot educate those people. They are ignorant. They know only how to take bribes and how promote their personal interests uh, and that's why the system is so corrupted and that's what why we find today uh, combined West where we find it uh, on the verge of basically complete collapse but it needs to be done to constantly provide these optics to press the Congress, including those people, this public opinion, all those lay people. And it's not their fault who see this whole situation that Russians are defeated, you know, Ukraine advances, and doesn't matter that it loses, I mean, basically, brigade sized forces within like 48 hours. They need the pressure and they need support for this war. They call their congressmen, they call their senators, they call all 
all the those people and tell them just you need to provide more weapons to this Ukraine guys you know because evidently they fight for democracy doesn't matter that they are Nazis but it's all about democracy as you understand and this is what is this all about and British <coughs> and American press obviously provide this necessary emotional high they constantly bullshit people they constantly manipulate public opinion and this is the only thing they can do basically most of those people as I already stated they don't have morals they don't have integrity they don't have anything they basically corporate animals they will sell their families if need be for anything and they promote themselves and the best way to promote is to lie and that's what they do and that's what happened with this yet another offensive which uh, have been presented as is coming, you know, and you will have soon the, you know, Russians evacuating uh, the Kherson, the whole 350 people who just express desire to move out. And it's not all, only in the British media, which are, as I already stated, it's the lowest of the sewer. It's where the whole shit basically settles as the sediment, basically. But we have also this thing, you know, it's Newsweek, it's there, uh, obviously, uh, uh, how to say, it's one of the most uh, fanatical neocon outlet. It's uh, they're, they're basically fanatics there. They're b and um, when we were going to be talking about it some other time about the whole role Western media play, which is primarily supporting war crimes and crimes against humanity. Obviously, Newsweek will stand uh, separately, and uh, basically, uh, those people they are Gibsonian type. But look at this. They complain about Russian missile strikes push Ukraine closer to no-fly zone. Deputy Prime Minister, it's a 36-year-old um, old bimbo, uh, Stefanishina, you can look her up. I mean, she's not by no means ugly woman, but she's stupid. She graduated some kind of shitty uh, international relations uh, Kiev University in, uh, with the uh, interpreter degree so her uh, opinions about on any military strategic situation are obviously absolutely worthless as are those of newsweek but look what stefanishina says in continuing this article and this is what i'm already uh, talking about and this has to be uh, constantly uh, exposed and talked about look what this bimbo says this war gives the Russian Federation, the Russian army, a precious experience of fighting basically with a NATO army, which has already been educated by NATO standards, NATO command chains, equipped with the newest NATO equipment, so they'll become stronger, even though they have been defeated. Okay, yeah, sure, Russian army have been defeated, we know that. Russia has been defeated, and uh, now cr desperate Kremlin is compiling up those, you know, articles of uh, unconditional surrender, but... This is a gr uh, great, basically, uh, admission. And those idiots from Newsweek, and they are idiots, believe me. Those people, again, as already stated, we, uh, look, we have to look at the whole humanities field in the Western world, all those Ivy League humanities people as absolutely, uh, uh, basically, unemployable in any serious capacity other than, you know, propaganda, basically. But even this lady who wouldn't know shit from Shinol in any military issue, she continues to, you know, admit that, yeah, this is NATO army. Well, it's not exactly NATO army, but, of course, and the whole thing about how the Ukraine wants to create the no-fly zone over Ukraine, that's the whole other story, which is hilarious. But this is just one, uh, so to speak, inside glimpse into how this whole panic and how this emotional high is reproduced time after time after time by Western media and especially by British media. They are even, I mean, wow, they are just out there, man. And I don't know any normal publication in Nova Days in uh, Great Britain, which I can trust, or not only me, many people, be that The Economist, which is the uh, fi financial illiteracy rag, or all these globalists and bullshit London, you know, stacked up idiots, you know, who pretend that they mean something while they sit in the goddamn, you know, uh, um, 
island which could be wiped out in five minutes by even you know conventional weapons by Russia but yeah they still think that they're so great and they continue to throw in they continue to staff this uh, 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 whole media uh, environment with this uh, basically agenda driven bullshit and obviously they have always uh, echoes of uh, in the United States who obviously work for the power of the purse they need the Congress to constantly finance this uh, uh, adventure because they understand oh, people in Biden administration and we already spoke about the professional qualities or lack thereof of those people there so they lost this war they know it many do they just uh, are desperate now to continue it somehow and that is why we have this hysteria you know uh, happening all over the place uh, in the last I don't know half a year at least because it was clear that yeah new territories will be incorporated by Russia and they are being incorporated as we speak they are now subjects of Russian Federation and as Vladimir Putin already stated, the first 16,000 of those not recruits but mobilized people already on the front lines, another 33,000 are already in the units uh, near their uh, lines, line of their contact uh, and they are getting ready to be also deployed to the front line. And then, yes, the first um, uh, wave of the mobilization is 220,000 people. So yeah, that's more than enough to start forming their full-blown military district in new four uh, areas of Russia and then of course provide the who knows when don't quote me on this I don't know it could happen actually tomorrow for all I care but most likely closer to winter when the drive starts towards um, I guess Nikolaev and Odessa and uh, that's uh, basically what I wanted to tell you today. So yeah, as expected, this offensive failed miserably with the huge losses. And this is the pattern which will continue for a while. And Russians, if need be, they will withdraw several kilometers from some yeah, empty field with some hamlet. If need be, they will go take it back when it's, uh, the time comes. So, it, And I already demonstrated to you what terrain is and what those offensives are about. And this is what I wanted to tell you today. And um, I'm sorry, guys, that I had to screw up you, to screw up your weekend, but this was uh, that uh, was needed to be addressed. So, uh, as always, those who like my channel, please subscribe, and uh, I'll talk to you later, guys. Have the nice rest uh, of the weekend. Bye, bye.